too excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty wild, but you know, sometimes natural processes just uh, break the rocks open for us, and we get uh, you know, we get little peeks into the interiors without having to do all the work on board. So I think that's what we're seeing here. Well, cool. All right. Thanks for the zoom. Uh -huh. I'm ready to move on. Is there anything else we wanted to look at in the area? All right. Yeah. We'll uh, keep making our way up. Zip hill. along here. Along what seems to be a, a uh, fairly extensive pile of clastite deposit, maybe uh, maybe a traverse that we're making over uh, some old late stage volcanic vent on the flanks of the seamount. It's a little bit uh, different than some of the ones we've uh, surveyed uh, earlier in the cruise, and uh, when we we're out this this way last year, uh, it's more conical in shape and uh, more more broadly defined uh, sort of you know, shallower ridges than, uh, than uh, what, what we've looked at before. Uh, with that, we've seen quite a bit of difference in uh, distribution of uh, uh, at least visible biological communities and uh, sedimentation, you know, what the rocks are doing. So each one of these dives is unique. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every volcano a little bit different. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I think something similar, you know, it does remind me so much of, of Mauna Loa, and Mauna Kea, mm -hmm. um, this topography. And I, from my understanding, Mauna Loa is um, like the largest volcanic mass on Earth. Yeah, so it's really... Uh, it's huge. It's such a, and you know, really? this has a sort of similar, similar uh, sort of weight to it this if, if you can see this one the full topographical map it's uh yeah like <coughs> like really sea floor to peak mm -hmm. yeah it's taller than everest yeah, yeah. It is it is a monster volcano it's incredible if you measure a monster in this case is definitely a compliment <laughs> a compliment <laughs> absolutely yeah That's interesting uh. and our olelo word for the day our hawaiian word for the day is Lua Pele, which Lua means Pele. volcano. Lua, Lua Pele. Pele. Wonderful. Thank you. Of course. I'm learning so many new words. Hyaloclastite. Everybody say that at home. <laughs> In the right. office, at school. Hyaloclastite. Just yell it out loud. <laughs> oh, can we get a zoom on this? And Lua Ooh. Pele. Nice spot. Lua Lua Pele. What is that? Out loud in the cubicle. Oh, we're about to find out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. Are you out. sponge or are you coral? I th oh, I think it's, I think coral. it's coral. I think it's coral. Although there are some sponges out there that, that, do that look, look like, like corals. corals, and it's um, a little unfair. <laughs> <laughs> it's unkind. You gotta keep us on our toes. I've been yeah. fooled by a couple of parades in the past. Mm -hmm. We're getting too good at this. They gotta, they gotta keep tricking us a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm really just look, trying to see things that we haven't gotten a good zoom on previously. Yeah, Mauna Kea uh, peaks at 13,803 feet or 4,207.3 meters above sea level, making it the highest oh, point in the state of Hawaii, the second highest peak of an island on the earth. Wow. wow. So it's a little taller, a whopping uh, 125 feet or 35, uh, 38 meters, sorry, higher than Mauna Loa. My understanding Mauna Loa is, is a little bit Big, bigger in terms of like mass, but yeah. Mauna Kea is taller. Yeah, I wonder if it's a uh, Yu Mountain, Jade Mountain in Taiwan, might be the tallest mountain on an island. I think it. I think it peaks out at just over fourteen thousand feet. Wow. I'm gonna go look Lived in up. Taiwan for a couple years and enjoyed you, my Thanks. time exploring those mountains a lot. Ah, Taiwan Aww. is pretty close. Um, the, the top is a. Uh, uh, Punkak Jaya, I think I'm pronouncing that oh, beautiful. relatively close, in New Guinea. Oh, interesting. Punkak Jaya. Looks like this might be... It reaches uh, 16,024 feet or 4,884 no. meters. Wow. It's very tall. Is this full zoom? It is. Thank you. Yeah. So this is interesting because it looks like it's a nodal branch here, but... I um, maybe internodal, so. Mutant. Are these yeah. uh, some associates? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. 
not positive. It's hard to tell from here what yeah. type of associate that is, but um, yeah, that's fantastic. That's excellent. Oh look, you can see the polyps closing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, there it yeah. goes. Oh, oh. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's responding to us. Well, cool. Yeah, Yushan on Taiwan reaches uh, to 12,966 feet or 3,952 meters. Just shy of 13,000. That is a very tall mountain. Very beautiful place. Ilha Formosa, as the Portuguese call it, a beautiful island. Mm. And uh, Taiwanese culture. It was a wonderful place to call home for a couple of years. Really enjoyed my imagine. time there. Awesome. That's a great zoom. Thank you so much. Oh, and there's some cup corals in the area as well. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, I saw a note that they saw some of those earlier in the dive too. So right. uh, yeah, those those came in after after we went to bed. <laughs> yeah, we're be we're also being joined in science ashore uh, ashore uh, chat by Asako. So awesome. Steve and Asako are wonderful friends, and uh, uh, Asako's just asking if I said monster volcano earlier, and I sure <laughs> did. <laughs> we, we were talking about Mauna Kea. Uh, Mauna Kea is uh, very large, but we were drawing some parallels between some of the uh, morphological features that we think we're seeing on the seamount that we're sur surveying right now. Uh, that, that, might, that might be uh, uh, similar to some of the features you can see on Mauna Kea, uh, some of these uh, little... Uh, Parasitic uh, late stage cones that you see on the uh, on the flanks of uh, Mauna Kea. We think we're going over one of those uh, something similar right now on uh, uh, unnamed seamount number twelve. Amazing. We have a viewer uh, identified themselves as Andy Collins saying Gardner Pinnacles, Onunui, the single largest volcanic feature on Earth. That's what they're. Uh, oh wow. We'll, uh, well, we'll that definitely look into they, that. That's pretty, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, there, there's some papers uh, that have uh, done some uh, bathymetric surveys on uh, uh, on that volcano. Uh, I believe uh, it's known as what is that? Uh, Puahonu. Hmm. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but yeah, I want to learn more now. Uh, yeah, it's it's thought to be a single volcanic edifice, and yeah, that that one. That is a monster of monsters. Yeah. So, yeah, let's go. Lots of ways I to measure these things. Uh, measure we, them we by the, the gravity differentials they create, by the uh, Yeah, we actually volume. went over part of its uh, northern rip zone area on our transit out here. Oh, mm. amazing. So, yeah. yeah, you can see it here in the Northwest Hawaiian Ridge. Yeah. And it's uh, this one right hey, here. Hey, Robert. Looks like there's a little oh, bit a of a single volcano. Right here. Yeah. It's incredible. I love it. Yeah, it's it's a remarkable volcano, and it it's uh, uh, it, the people have done uh, some studies calculating changes in uh, flux, basically the the amount of material moving through the Hawaiian plume over time, mm -hmm. and um, uh, the Gardner Gardner Pinnacles uh, Puahonu um, it represents. Uh, a pretty substantial surge in that flux rate of the plume. Right. So it was pretty low for a while after after the bend that makes that that very sharp corner in the uh, Hawaiian Emperor uh, hotspot track. Yeah. See the seamounts get smaller, a little bit more sparse, and that's kind of that's that's right about where we're located right now. And then as you uh, head east toward the islands, you see just this this huge increase in the Expansion. size of the seamounts. Then they they drop back off a little bit, and then they they get uh, just enormous again. Um, uh, once you get to uh, the volcanic platforms that built the islands, but the islands are made out of multiple volcanoes, whereas we think uh, we think Puahonu may be just one. You know, yeah. That that might be correct, but you know we might find more evidence in the future at some point that says otherwise. Geologic waves, Pele just riding waves across geologic time. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty amazing. Yeah, things yeah, getting big, getting smaller, moving with uh, the flow of the middle of the earth.
planet making, Earth yeah. making. Unbelievable. And, in, and to our chats about like uh, uh, currents and stuff, last night after that, uh, you know, as part of that uh, Halo Klein rabbit hole we went down. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the, the upper sea cool. mounts are also very <laughs> high flux, and, and you can see just these very large volcanic platforms that they yeah. that they develop uh, in the northern Pacific compared to a lot of the volcanoes uh, that you can see in the western and the southern Pacific. Um, so if, if, you, if you're uh, looking at Google Earth, like I spend way too much time doing, uh, <laughs> and you can see that size differential between uh, what the Hawaiian uh, plume is producing versus a lot of the other uh, uh, intraplate uh, uh, volcanic sources, these other mantle plumes further south and east in the Pacific. Yeah. So uh, the Hawaiian plume is really kind of a unique dynamic setting. And uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's an outlier compared to other plumes in, in many ways. And uh, it's the reason in part why it's so accessible. It's because it's built up these, uh, these larger islands. Um, it, it controls so many different factors in the Pacific, like uh, you know, currents, uh, distributions of species. I'm sure, you know, all sorts of stuff. And uh, it's just such a prominent feature that it, we're, uh, as humans, you know, we're, we're drawn to outliers. We're drawn to things that are very prominent like that, and uh, you know, that that sparks our curiosity. So. Yeah, it tells an important uh, important part of the story of, of the Earth making, planet making story, and. Um, it's, I think, you know, you don't spend too much time. I think this is just part of, we need more minds and more hearts uh, thinking about geologic time, deep time, understanding this process that's been taking place over these incredibly long periods of time. And uh, it gives us more perspective on what exactly it is we're doing in our uh, little five minute bubbles as we march through the day, or four hour bubbles if you're on Nautilus and working on watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's, it, you know, there, there are advantages and disadvantages to studying outliers because studying those extremes give, gives us an idea of, you know, how far certain uh, boundaries uh, can be, or, you know, certain, certain things can be pushed within the Earth's system. But uh, at the same time, you need to study the things that kind of kind of fall into the middle of some of these ranges, too. And uh, that's, that's one thing I'm kind of pushing in mantle plume science right now to try to do a little bit more of. You know, look, yeah. at, look at the rest of the spectrum. Uh, not necessarily just Hawaii, but all of the plumes, all of these places. Because I think that will help us understand the inside of the Earth more. Maybe understand eventually why the Hawaiian plume is, it, it just, it's just so much stronger and so much more prominent, you know, so much higher flux and, uh, uh, you know, higher activity, higher melt this? generation than any of the other uh, plumes. So, feels like we're just getting started in so many ways and yet... You know, mantle we plumes are. have been a thing for, you know, they've been being studied for about 50 years. Relative to all other species, we are still in our infancy. So, yeah. uh, Geology just is beginning. Oh, we've got some very large tube anemones. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it, we're, we're just getting started with this. Geology is a very young science. Marine geology, wow. all of its various branches are even younger. Did you call for a Zoom, Zach? Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry, I'm waxing poetic back here. I can no, shut my trap. I was an honest deal. <laughs> <laughs> and what's oh, uh, what's wow. hanging out next to it too? On the right side of the screen. Alien. Not sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just a blob. <laughs> That tube anemone, though, is beautiful. It is. Yeah, I know that um, there's a couple, maybe a couple different groups of tube anemones. Um, someone earlier, I think, was saying that uh, to get a good view at the oral face is important. And it looks like we can actually see some of the, the shorter arms within there. So that's good. Is this full zoom by any it chance? It is, yeah. Great. Thank you. Our wonderful team predicting, predicting what the scientists want. Um, that's excellent. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's um, great. Is that a small coral or a worm or what's just above the tube in the, in the just sand? Just above. There, in oh. the sediment there. Oh, I see. Oh yeah. I have yeah, no idea right here. Mm -hmm. I could, 
I think there could be any number of small organisms in which that could be. It could be a hydroid. Oh, there are there are non-coral looking hydroids that are stunning, um, but that doesn't actually give the same sort of look. Um, yeah, it's that's interesting. I do not know. A baby sea dragon. Could be. Could be. Okay. Friend online says maybe a nemertine worm. I don't yeah. know about these kinds of worms. Oh. Sacco's suggesting maybe a nudibranch on the right side. Oh. Just oh, to get really? out of the uh, sediment there. Cool. Interesting. But uh, she's not sure. Yeah, we could get another, if we could get a zoom on the potential nudibranch, the, the thing right to the, uh, oh, yeah. I think it was that right thing. here. That yeah, yeah. It, it didn't, I couldn't get a good look at it, but I. I was full zoom, so we might have to move closer. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if we'll be able to positively ID that. There's not a ton of it yeah. um, that we can look at. Yeah. I'm not seeing much that's not in the sediment. Yeah. We got a little coral in the foreground there. Yeah. Okay. Something good. Okay. All right. Thanks, y'all. Yeah, thank you. We're such a great team. I like mm -hmm. you guys a lot. Yeah. Missing Kukui watch. though. Kukui ran away. She's in the studio. Doing one of the most important. Don't worry, she'll be back. Components of this, which is uh, the outreach to different school groups, which I think is so awesome. It's incredible, and this one is in Olelo, Hawaii, entirely oh, in wow. Hawaiian language. So amazing as a as a way to interact with our community, our home, and in, in Hawaii. Um, able to from the from the ship communicate in Olelo Hawaii in Hawaiian language, one of the official languages of the Hawaiian Islands, as it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent. Yeah. A lot of work has gone in over the last uh, 40 to 50 years to bring the language back and uh, make create a whole system of schools and learning opportunities and community infrastructure that is uh, built around. Olelo Hawaii. And it sounds like Olelo Hawaii is thriving these days. It is an incredible, you know, generation, two generations ago, it was, uh, mm -hmm. we were thinking we might lose the language and thanks to incredibly hard work and, and persistence and, um, and care, uh, knowledge building, the That's language, wonderful. language is back and thriving with more yeah. young children speaking the language than we've had in a very long time. So. Mm -hmm. Language is so important. <laughs> We're hearing all sorts of happy things from the studio. You can hear the joy. It uh, <laughs> yeah. shines through in Olelo Hawaii all the time. It's people yeah. often, how do you say, if you, if you ask how to say kind of uh, profane words or harsh words in Hawaii, we don't have the, we don't have the words for them. We've kind of maybe invented some, especially in pigeon in modern, <laughs> modern times, recent modern years. Parlance. But, uh, but really in, in, in the Hawaiian language, you know, so much revolves around aloha and uh, revolves around respect and and uh, care for one another so yeah really really awesome it's a good way to be it's a, um yeah sako ids uh that tuba nominee is a uh, syrianthus yes so yeah, that makes sense gotcha excellent and we've moved out of hyaloclastites in the last several minutes and into uh, what looks like some uh, pillow lavas so we're also uh, off of that, um, off of that that little uh, cone or knob-like structure, and uh, we're starting to move um, up slope uh, uh, toward uh, uh, the the broader summit region, and we're uh, yeah we're gonna follow that ridge up toward uh, the summit as we go, and we'll uh, we'll see if we get some more hyaloclastites popping out or not. But for now, back into uh, the presumed basalts. Kind of quite a knobby summit, like we were talking about, similar to Mauna Kea. There's just yeah. a, a lot of little nodes uh, sticking out of, of this slope, which is makes it fun for exploring. And we did have a question, Val, come in er, a little bit earlier. It was about the difference between pelagonite and hyaloclastite. Is that an interesting question? Uh, yeah. Um, so pelagonite is uh, uh, related to uh, like the glassy rind that we get on... Uh, uh, some of these lava flows, uh, that's, that's the rind that uh, quenches in contact with the seawater. Um, and uh, uh, 
Yeah, when it quenches, it forms a glass because it, it cools and solidifies too quickly for crystals to form. So you have that uh, disordered structure. And that um, that does, uh, over time, tend to devitrify. It's a, um, there are rare cases where we see patches of uh, pretty well-preserved glass. <laughs> Hearing more joy from the studio, so it. <laughs> it's, it's infectious. Um, but yeah, that, that does devitrify and alter into uh, uh, softer, you know, secondary material like clays or, uh, uh, yeah, kind of basically clay-like uh, material over time. Uh, it's pretty easy to ID uh, along the quench rims of the rocks mm -hmm. that we sometimes bring up. Um, with the, uh, the hyaloclastites, yeah, probably a lot of those deposits do initially start off glassy because uh, that will quench pretty quickly in the water column. Yep. And that's that's part of the reason, as well as like uh, porosity and uh, the likely presence of uh, some hydrothermal circulation, why those alter so quickly compared to uh, uh, chunks of rock that we would pick up uh, that are related to uh, lava flows. Okay. Oh, mahalo for that. Oh, yeah, thank you. Not very chemically stable, and a lot of opportunities because uh, it's it's fragmented uh, lava. Um, a lot of opportunities for uh, that material to alter very quickly. So, yeah. pretty big lever on that process. Oh, excellent. We a uh, couple updates from uh, folks tuning in from online on Nautilus Live, um, and some information for those of you who are kind of joining us just since our watch began, but also many of you might have been on watching in the previous watch when we saw the Chana Cops and. One of our shoreside fish scientists, Ken Sulak, is talking about chana cops and amazing, amazing. Uh, these fishes can make a living on this manganese encrusted basalt and and uh, a, a low energy specialist. Uh, and really interesting point that uh, the lure on these anglerfish not usually extended and it's not a visual lure, but a chemical lure. Um, that attracts prey to the mouth area. So somehow it's uh, some aspect of that um, of that lure is a chemical attractant. Uh, that's pretty pretty interesting. So ambush, you know, outstanding low energy ambush predators just lure the fish into them. So if you saw those cute little chana cops, don't get too close. Don't go towards their little chemical light. They'll get you. Um, and then one just. Uh, Mahalo, our, our viewer, uh, whose ancestors come from the Eastern Band Cherokee of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Also, like so many of our indigenous cousins, uh, First Nations, Native Americans, um, across North America, around the Pacific, uh, around the world, truly, uh, recapturing and, and rediscovering their language as well. And so it's awesome to see you. And part of that, maybe part of that paradigm shift that um, we were alluding to earlier that's taking place across across all fields interested in understanding our place here on this beautiful planet. Very much so. Oh, quick clarification on the pelagonite question. Uh, pelagonite is the alteration product uh, from those glasses. So yeah, okay. the, that's uh, so basically the, those glass rinds that we look at, those altered glass rinds and the uh, hyaloclastites, very closely related. I, I suppose you could classify um, hyaloclastites as a pelagonite product too. Okay. Um, it's just I, I tend to refer to those uh, uh, specifically as hyaloclastites uh, because of the uh, different um, emplacement mechanisms involved Makes compared sense. to the pelagonite that we pick up uh, on uh, the rims of uh, some of the uh, some of the lava samples we pick up. So all hyaloclastites are pelagonites but not all pelagonites are hyaloclastites? Pretty much yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Pelagonitization. <laughs> There's another word for you. Oh boy. Add that to uh, oh hyaloclasti botryoidal. We're going to have and a chapter with that title as soon as I learn how to spell it and write it down mm. and say it correctly. Well, It'll be an I isotope even, story. So. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I can't even get it out of my mouth properly. So. <laughs> Words are hard some days. Yeah. yeah. Most days. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So I realized my mic was muted. <laughs> I was like, I've seen the circle, but I don't hear anyone, so. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there they go with the telestrator again. <laughs> We're just over here geologizing. Oh. We are geologizing. Uh. <clears throat> so. This is sheet flow or pillow basalts? What are we looking uh, at here? Looks like, it looks like some pillow basalts, uh, but they're, they're pretty well encrusted with uh, some ferromanganese, too. Yeah. 
So you, you have that kind of uh, bulbous, sort of humpy texture here, as well as the botryoidal, the smaller botryoidal texture from the uh, mm -hmm. crust, uh, the crustal growth itself. Could we get a zoom on this as well? Yeah. How'd the interaction go, Kukui? Oh, it was so my cut, you know. <laughs> yeah, we just went and interacted with um, Okulokai Punahawaiian Immersion School um, on Molokai. And oh, they had so many beautiful nino, and they gifted us with a beautiful song after. It was, whew. Oh, and it was, it was beautiful. Lovely. Yeah, we, yeah. Heard, we heard so much joy in yeah. the studio there. Oh, oh no, we, no. Oh, you can hear it. You can just hear it. a little bit. Just from the oh. distance. No, don't, 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 don't apologize. Don't apologize. We, we were, no, we were totally, we were totally loving it. Oh. No, I, I love it when you just hear laughter anywhere throughout this ship. I almost Any wanted. Time of day. At first, uh, you guys were actually on SPL. I think the the switch was <laughs> yeah. toggled, and, and yeah. I wanted, I wanted to leave it on. Part for, I was like, oh, but then just because uh, I knew listening to you and. And uh, Malia oh. um, share with with uh, those homana from Molokai was going to be special. So I'm glad you all got to do that, and uh, we at least got to hear the laughter and the joy and the mm -hmm. aloha. Oh, oh, mahalo. No. Oh, mahalo, you guys. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this yeah, is awesome. We haven't seen something that looks like this today. Yeah, or, it's, uh, or black or coral. Yet this. this. Yeah. Yeah. maybe. It's got a, a branch coming off in the yeah. middle of the stalk. Right. But it looks so. like it's got stuff growing in all sorts of directions here. Right, which is, uh, if uh, for anyone who's been looking at these recently, it's uh, with us. We haven't we haven't been seeing that. We've been seeing a lot of the bath pathies, which are very parallel, parallel well, they're, branching. They're more like this planar, is, right? Yes. I mean, sort of. They've got a sort nice of. little beautiful curve to them. But, um, you know, yes, more, more in a planar fashion, which this is. This actually does look like the pipe cleaner that we sometimes um, describe Chrysocorchias as. Um, and so it's got a very different branching structure um, than the, the bath pathies that we've been seeing earlier on this dive. Uh, um, Sako is suggesting possibly uh, parantopathies. Parantopathies. Yeah, um, that would be within the schizopathidae. Um, yeah, but I mean, it does visually to my eye looks similar, which would be awesome. Thank you, Asako. Yeah, mahalo nui. Yeah, it's always, it's always so great to um, get information from the, the shore side, um, who, you know, has been doing this a lot longer than a lot of us, uh, than, you know, some of the, well, at least me. <laughs> um, that's awesome. And it looks like it's got a couple of associates on it too. One, one ophiroid and and something else there. I think it may be a shrimp. Yeah. yeah. Or an amphipod. I was going to guess oh, crab, crab, but that's uh, mainly because everything becomes crab. Yeah, it also yes. looks like there's another something over um, oh, yeah. on the right as well. That's really awesome. Oh, and I was incorrect. Asako mentioned that the Tina ID a similar um, colony earlier. Tina, another one of our um, uh, wonderful uh, scientists ashore who has been following along. Yeah. Parantopathy is awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh, yep. Parantopathy. Yeah, as much as I wish we could, we, we just can't keep up on what happens overnight. <laughs> so we we got to sleep. Sleep is so <laughs> important. So it is so important. This is, this is another thing our uh, shore team really helps us with is if uh, we see something new to us on a dive, uh, if it's been seen on a previous watch, uh, they can really help catch us up and, uh, you know, uh, help us get a little more context to what we're looking at. So it's really valuable for us. <laughs> and uh, you guys saw a nudibrink? We think Folks so. Saw nudibrink? Oh. Well, we're not sure. Oh my gosh. Look at that sweet star. Cool. Uh, wow. Is it eating something, or yeah. is it just hanging out? Yeah. Unknown. Can we get a zoom on that? Um, are we in a position where we can hold for a sec? Oh, uh, wow, there's a really large bamboo in yeah. front of us. Yeah. yeah. Do a flyby. Second. Try to go down a little bit. It's one of those uh, nine-armed sea stars, I think. Like a zoom, Amber? Two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think it's a nine-armed sea star. Wow. 
Ah, yeah. Look at that. It does almost look like it's just on top of a rock, but it could okay. be on top of something else. Yeah, because it's kind of got that, that folded over look that some of the predating sea stars have. But we, Ooh, we, just we got a, something. That was yeah. a worm. We just had a worm swim through the uh, yeah. field of view. Yeah. Love worms. Well, okay. I like some worms. Zoom up. Awesome. Thank you for that. Yeah, uh -huh. thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that is a huge oh, bamboo. Oh, yeah, that is a large bamboo. Very beautiful. Virginia, I have a question about black coral. Yeah, what's up? Um, so at what depth range will you see black coral? Um, you're asking the depth of, of all black corals? Yeah, just like the range, uh, like the shallowest. I mean, we're seeing it here and we're at 1,673 meters and we've seen them at like deeper yeah. depths. Yeah, but what I guess what my question is, what's the shallowest you might see them at? I, th I mean, I think they're on, I, th I think you could find them on like tropical reefs, right? Like they're you dive uh, off Mahukono on, yeah, uh, on so Moku Keawe and see quite a few sometimes. Right. They can be yeah. pretty okay. shallow. Um, wow. Uh, quick, quick Google says that they are found um, in all oceans. They're more common in deep water habitats yeah. um, of the s tropical and subtropical seas. Um, and they can uh, be as shallow as three um, to 300 feet. Oh, wow. But they can also be, um, and so that's one to 110 meters. And yeah. so as we often work in meters here, we're at, um, looks like 1,670 meters, which is very much within their depth range as they have also been recorded at depths of 4,000 to 6,000 meters. Wow, it's yes. crazy. Yeah, it looks like black corals um, are some of the, the deeper of the, the coral taxa. Amazing to have that kind oh, of range and this is I yeah. think can we get a zoom on that? Oh, is that a what euphilia? It looks like a almost looks like a euphilia. That looks that, that looks like um looks like one of my favorite anemones, but it I It looks I like it has lighter tips. Yeah. That's awesome. what we see with that. Yeah. What what were you saying it was, Zach? It looked like an euphilia because uh, aren't euphilias like really bright tips? It, it is an anemone though. Yeah, I think it is an anemone. Um, yeah. I can't remember. I love it? seeing them. It's so funny. I love seeing them, but I can't remember what their name is. Um, oh, that's so distinct with the with the. Yes, uh, they've the got white, the little the white tips. The little that's white dots cool. on them. They're yeah. so pretty. Oh, wow. Could we get the lasers off for a second, please? Sure. Thank you. Oh, this is gorgeous. Yeah. Well. Oh, you can see some like stippling patterns on the tentacles themselves. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, these are not uncommon. I think, oh, I might have found something that's uh, visually similar. Um, um, Asako says maybe Corallomorph? Yeah, Corallomorph. Corallomorph. It's Interesting. I was going to, oh, let's, let's, do, let's look into that. Oh, that does look very much, yeah, absolutely. So the bubble tip? Mm -hmm. Yes, the little bubble tip corral morph. That, that looks very appropriate. Very name. similar to this. Uh, wonderful, thank you so much. Yeah, mahalo nui. Mahalo nui, asako. Yeah, these are such beautiful, um, beautiful organisms. I, t I love seeing them. Seeing them. Yeah, thanks Thanks for the help with that, Asako. Mm -hmm. Some of our viewers tuning in online, sharing that same Time bit of knowledge. Appreciate that. Out, oh, beautiful shot. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, can we get the lasers back on when you're ready? Yeah. 
Awesome. Thank you. It's great to be surrounded by knowledge. It's, it's one of the amazing things about telepresence here, having our incredible team scientists ashore, but also having all of you, our fellow deep sea travelers, tuning in on Nautilus Live or YouTube. And uh, absolutely love your questions, your comments, your stories, the knowledge that you share. It may not all make it on to SBL, but it's uh, deeply appreciated. Amazing to think that uh, as young as deep sea exploration is, we've already arrived at a place where we can crowdsource the uh, knowledge of the deep sea mm -hmm. yeah, live uh, on the internet while we're while we're exploring. Unbelievable. It's the power of this technological revolution we've been living through for the last couple of decades. Oh, interesting. You know, I remember the pre-internet era, and it, it just feels so different, so so much <laughs> smaller. But I was also a lot younger. Yeah. What were you saying, uh, Virginia? Um, I, I just did a quick Google on Corellomorphs, and uh, just as Asako just said, they look like anemones, but they're um, they're very different. They have a skeleton. Um, they're wow. closely related to Scleractinians. And, oh really? Um, those are some of the the organisms. They're some of the same taxa that people keep in their reef reef aquariums. Yeah, oh. I'm looking at a reef aquarium website right now yeah. for uh, taxonomy of these. <laughs> How great! Looking at a so at a similar species right now called a uh, uh, Corallomorphus profundus, but I don't think that was quite what we were seeing. It looks similar, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, at least the, the the tentacles or the polyps do. But uh, the center of it looks a lot different from what we just saw. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like those frosted, those, those frosted bubbly tips are kind of a defining characteristic of those yeah, corallomorphs. The, the, yeah. closest, um, the closest observation within the um, deep sea benthic guide that we're using is Corallomorphidae, Corallomorphus, um, CF rigidus. I think that looks hmm. pretty yeah, close. Yeah, that looks pretty close. Yeah. So, well, wow. excellent. I totally thought that was an anemone. Oh, yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Uh, luckily, How I think cool. it would be very diff easy to. Yeah, to convergent it. evolution it never fails to amaze. Oh, it is convergent evolution? Good style. I, I would guess. It's just good style. You know, just, uh, you know, two totally different species uh, uh, developing similar body forms. I mean, I'm probably using the, 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 the simplest, like, broadest version of that definition. Mm. So I think there is some nuance to it that I'm missing, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm actually not sure where anemones, um, where they fall along the scale of, of Nadarian. Um, and if that's, a, that's an awesome question. Never mind. <laughs> well, morphologies do follow function, and many of yeah. these deep sea mm -hmm. creatures, regardless of taxa, uh, are are benefited by taking on certain forms. It allows yeah. them to feed and filter feed, and yeah, so we like probably see a lot of examples of that kind of convergent evolution yeah. you're just talking about. Much like that uh, carcinization thing that um, uh -huh. I, that I like to I like to poke at a little bit every now and yeah. again, or uh, yeah, yeah. you know, eels, eel-like fishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anthozoans, okay. Anthozoans, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's gonna bother me. Yeah. This is fantastic. So is this still the pillow basalts? It looks like it, yeah. Great, great. Which is different from the hyaloclastite that we saw a little while ago and mm -hmm. Is that different from the rocks that we started at on? That was a. Mm, I'm trying to remember what, what we was started that a on. Was sheet flow? Yeah, I think we like saw some sheet crusted. flows. It was. Yeah. yeah, sheet flows. yeah. Was, there wasn't really anything that we could pick up, and it was a little bit uh, broad and less featured. Awesome. Yeah. So we've seen at least three different zones of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What is that? Geogra geo um, geological zones? Mm -hmm. Geo rock? Rock types? Um, more, I don't know, um, geomorphology. Oh, great. Geomorphology. Yeah. Uh, 
And it's it's pretty common to see these these kinds of transitions between uh, uh, you know uh, bedrock uh, forms and textures mm -hmm. as as we traverse these. And uh, yeah, usually you see quite a bit of switching between things like pillow basalts, uh, sheet flows, lobate flows, um, hyaloclastite deposits in certain areas. So um, yeah, we're we're kind of going. Uh, up through time a little bit, um, geologically speaking. So as we uh, as we head further and further upslope towards the summit, um, most likely the rocks that we're seeing are, uh, are you know, for the most part, getting uh, progressively younger. Um, obviously, the stratigraphy is a little more complex than that, but uh, that's that's the broad pattern that uh, that we're seeing. Um, you're not going to be able to see see visible evidence of these getting younger because it's it's a change usually across the course of a few, few million years compared to uh you know the overall span of time that we're looking at here which is you know somewhere in the range of 25 to 30 million years on the young end uh, up to uh like 80 90 ish uh on the high end so you know difference of a few million years there uh, we're, we're gonna see overall kind of broadly similar uh characteristics uh uh, in in the view that we see right now, but a lot of changes here and there in textures. Sometimes rock type, um, you know, depending on sedimentation, slope, uh, the ability of uh, uh, animals to grow into uh, that water column where they can feed more readily uh, uh, will all have some sort of influence on uh, distribution of life that's growing on it. And here we're seeing a lot less sedimentation than we did uh, at the start of the dive, but still, uh, still a decent amount in those little crevices, little corners where uh, 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 the water currents are tamer and uh, the uh, sediments can drop out the water column, so you get those little deposits forming. Yeah, I think I saw one question a while back asking. Uh, you know, from a viewer asking if uh, we see any uh, dependence on the distribution of species that we see uh, with rock type. So basically, if the rock type changes, do we see different species growing? And that's that's something I'm, I'm not sure we can really answer too well. There have been several studies that have looked into it. Um, unfortunately, some, some of them have uh, had different results. Um, right. I think partially it's got to do with the scale that you're looking at. I mean because especially here, right, like you've got, we've got different types of rocks and that also is correlated with the different heights of the rocks and the mm -hmm. different, um, um, you know, how, how uh, you know, some, some of these like pillow basalts, they're um, slightly uh, taller maybe than some of the sheet, you know, sheet layers. Yeah, they can form some of those more prominent, uh, 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 with those more uh, prominent vertical structures right and so it it could be a combination of yes it is it is a different type of rock that then gives that structure but the real the you know the 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 factor that is making that a difference is actually potentially the currents and the availability of right. food and that difference um yeah because we can see yeah. some similar bed forms but seamount to seamount we can see r r very distinctly different uh uh, community distributions too. So well, yes. there, there's so many factors that yeah. go into but that. But we've also been looking at slightly different depths and different sides of the seamount. So mm -hmm. unfortunately there are, um, you know, a, a large number of, of different um, potential uh, factors influencing these communities. Yeah. One of those um, simple questions that doesn't have a simple answer. <laughs> I like those, but absolutely. yeah, unfortunately, we just—it's just not something Looks we can like give a good answer to. Looks like in front of us too, which is nice. Yeah, so, yeah, it's uh, you know, you you think we'd be able to say, oh yeah, no, totally, it's this one one component that is absolutely changing that is very visible, but there are some non-visible um, environmental factors that yeah. make a really big difference to these. Um, these seamount communities as well. Oh, totally. Uh, Catalina, how are we doing with the with the moves? So we we were stopped right now. We were um, waiting for Robert to get back, which he just did. Um, and I think oh, we got probably want to get Atalanta mm -hmm. turned around. around. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're almost to that kind of ridge where we can maybe start heading up. I can jump up a little bit more onto the ridge, and then we can like start um, kind of going more north. 
Uh, yeah, I think I think we're thinking the same thing here. So that sounds like an awesome plan of action. Awesome. So we'll, we'll let the ROVs get uh, sorted out. Sweet. You good? Okay. Cool. Corallomorph. That is something brand new that I learned today. Mm -hmm. They're so beautiful. I think we've this seen so some of cool. them previously, but the little the little bubbles on their ends just make them so distinctive. Yeah, it's it seems to be really diagnostic, and like uh, Dan was saying, it's looking at uh, some different pictures of uh, Corallomorph species online, and uh, yeah, all sorts of colors, but a lot of them have these these kind of bubble-looking features on the tips. It's like. Mm -hmm. You know, are th do those have stinging cells in them or like sticker cells or something? Can't help but wonder. I want to say stinging cells um, if they're in the phylum Cnidaria. Okay. Because um, oftentimes uh, coral polyps will also have uh, nematocysts, and at least for shallow water corals, that's I think that's sometimes how they also get their food too. And you see their polyps sticking out, and sometimes they latch on. And they sting their prey and then bring them into their um, their mouth. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's my initial guess, but yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah, these are certainly some of the some beautiful organisms. Love to see them. Yeah, apparently they're mostly tropical organisms, but they can occur in both temperate and tropical climates. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Temperate forms have wide and long columns, whereas tropical forms tend to have very short columns with a wide oral disc and very short tentacles. So it's interesting how that a little change in, uh, well, maybe not so little change in climate can have such a strong effect on uh, the morphology of the organism. Oh, and some, some more of those Walteria sponges. Always wonderful to see those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of those the last couple of dives. Yeah. We've, we've been deeper the last couple of dives, though, too. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah they're pretty cool. So, Kukui, what was one of the coolest, uh, did, did y'all show any, like, any of the aspects of the dive previously to the students that you were talking to, or um, any cool animals, anything, just, you know, what, what was something that you thought was really fun to show them? I, um, Malia chose, um, the gulper eel video, oh, nice. and just seeing cool. all their faces when the gulper eel closed its jaw, they are like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's kind of how I felt when I saw that video for the first time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is such a great video. For anyone who's not aware, there's um, 
I believe Nautilus captured, a, it was a juvenile gulper eel, which just is amazing. Um, a, a gulper eel um, hunt, potentially hunting. Um, and it uh, opened its, its massive mouth and had a, a whole bunch of water. Um, and they have a pelican-like bill um, or um, mouth. And so they're able to inflate their, they're able to um, hold large parts of, they're able to put large amounts of water as well as larger organisms into their mouth um, to, to swallow. It's uh, pretty amazing. And then that water filters through their gills. That's, that's incredible. Kuhi Wahanui. I can a little Hawaii name that uh, gifted to the gulper eel by a class of Hawaiian children. Pretty awesome. And, uh, more bath packies. Yeah. Such a contrast. I just stepped out of the stepped outside of the van. It's another beautiful day. Oh yeah. So malie, just so calm. Yeah, we're Morning. getting really close to a glass-like sea state, which <laughs> you see every now and again, but not too often. It's striking. It's striking, Jeez. and uh, and you know, for those of us who have been at sea, you know that doesn't last forever. So uh, no, yeah, something coming from over the horizon, Kanaloa, has some surprises and tricks to play on us. But uh, yeah, that's I'm part of the fun too. <laughs> I'm right there with you, Dan. Uh, this. <laughs> We have had just unbelievably calm weather. Yeah, it's been absolutely so amazing. I'll take it for as long as Kanaloa is willing to give it. Yeah. And uh, in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, the weather is always on our minds because uh, it's 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 pretty typical out here. From what I understand, that uh, the weather can be. Uh, a little difficult at times, and certainly when we were out here during 138 last year, uh, we ran into some weather issues. Yeah, you had to, to run, go for run it. from it. Yeah, we had to exit the it's monument for a couple of days uh, to wait for conditions in this area to uh, 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 to calm down enough to, to where we could resume science down here. Absolutely. So we made it all, almost all the way up to Hess Rise, which is outside of the monument. Oh, wow. Go. Closer to Alaska We're than it is it. to Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. We got a big uh, yeah, we got chili up there. Right? You're halfway to the party in Norway. We got invited to yeah. Yeah. one of our yeah. last watches. Yeah, we made, we made it all the way up, up here uh, last year. And yeah, way for those north. For those watching at home, I've been trying to get SPL to uh, Utila. In the Bay Islands in Honduras, been trying to get us over to the fjords in Norway. So hey, stick with us. Eight to twelve watch will get us there eventually. <laughs> uh, party time. Yeah, the Okeanos is just working in the uh, Gulf of Alaska. Right. Looked miserable. Yeah, they were dealing with some weather conditions up there for sure. We love you, Okeanos, but uh, yeah, it's much nicer down here in paradise. Yeah, I know. I just keep looking at that cam. Of like the Malia water. Oh, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. So, so Malia's favorite creature, probably the Puhi Wahanui, but what about us? Well, let's go around control van. Who's got a, who's got a favorite? Kukui? Oh, that is a very hard question. It doesn't have to be the favorite, but a favorite. A one fa one okay. you feel pilino with, one that you, you really gives you joy or makes you curious, makes you wonder. Science chat friends, you got to play too. Dang, dang, that, yeah, that's a very good question. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm a worm girl, so anytime I see any kind of worm, I'm like, what are you? And that other polychaete worm that we saw, I'm like, what are you? <laughs> Loves those polychaete worms. Get them. Kukui. All right, that's a good one. Science chat, the internet, we want to know. Get ready to tune in. I think Virginia's gonna drop her. Uh, well, we've we've heard we've heard a few. I can I can I can tell a snailfish. Snailfish mm. is one of the all-time faves. I, yes, I do love I do love snailfish. They're just so fun, um, and they come in so many beautiful colors. They do. Oh. They do, and they've got these adapted fins. I mean, they're just they're very unique. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and um, you know, we used to see them when I, where I previously worked, and they brought me joy there as well. But actually, the the fish that would bring me the most amount of joy ever to see. They are Pacific lump suckers. Lump suckers. <laughs> they are oh, small like little, the, but the small ones. This. They're small ones. Let me see if I can't find them. Miniature lump suckers. Go ahead and yeah, Google that. I know and that see there what was there was a well a viral mm, on my. Um, oh. oh yeah, the the Pacific spiny lump sucker. They're just like they're small. They're smaller than the palm of your hand. Um, they have these adapted fins that just make them adhesive to things. And they're little spiky, spiky little organisms, just little fish with little, you know, they got a little bit of spike on them, but they're, they're happy and they're just, they're just a mouth with eyes and <laughs> adapted <laughs> fins and they're just big eyes and they're so adorable. It's kind of like me. Um, it was kind of like us at Ice Cream Sunday last night. <laughs> yeah, and they're just happy and, and uh, look, look at that picture. I oh mean, my gosh. Yeah, adorable. and they just kind of sit there and they're, they're happy and, and um, you know, they 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 seem to do well out of water for a while too, so you can just kind of stick them to your basket, and they'll just <laughs> hang out there while you're counting the rest of your fish, and then and then you put them in some water, and they're swimming around, and yeah. You know they're much cuter than their name would suggest. Yeah. Than the Pacific um, Pacific spiny lump sucker. <laughs> yes. We need a new name. Yeah. Yeah. We need yeah. A new name. yeah. Mom, I don't know if you're listening, but can we get one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a pet. Yeah. Just kidding. We don't take pets. Uh, Kukui, yeah. when was the last depth that we took a rock at? Oh, we do have. That is a very, very good question. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at the substrate here. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Okay, we here took we one go. on our shift. Yeah, we yeah, took one at okay. 1747 meters. Okay, yeah, it's a little too soon. No, but it looks so. Thanks. So, Val, you can't say rock. What's your, what's your, what's a favorite uh, living? living being it doesn't even have to be in the ocean rock <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you tell val you can't do something val's gonna be able to do no, it um I serious it. answer i am a very recent convert to the tumbling snail i know it's a flight response and i know it's running away when it does that and it's it's uh trying to protect itself and but it's just so fascinating to watch it move like that as and someone who's the polished snail shell, yeah, oh, it's beautiful it's that polished shell from all that tumbling. It's amazing. Yeah. As someone who makes a lot of other living things run away frequently, I, I, I appreciate that they can at least be cute while they're doing it. That <laughs> tumbling snail, that was awesome. Mahina Lani. Um, I was at the top of the monkey deck the other day um, after dinner, and I saw two uh, yellow. Yellowtail mahi, oh, swimming. Ooh, oh wow! So beautiful. And then I actually saw um, a koekea, like circling yeah. above the deck, which is a beautiful, beautiful long white-tailed bird. Oh, and it's yeah. kind of like black um, spots around their eyes. But I feel that that's like just one of my favorite manuke. And then um, I saw a mono, yeah, kind of pull up on the starboard side. And then after our crew had seen it, our watch crew had seen it on the cameras. Um, but other than that, sometimes when we go out at sunset, we'll see uh, kohola. They'll come up to like our boat. They'll breach. That happened once behind Kohelepelepe, behind um, Makapu'u around sunset. And it kind of like scared, it scared us because you could just hear them breathe and they like I come up the out of the water. Of a whale, yeah, the when I worked on a different boat, whales. yeah, we would see them a lot more during, you know, certain seasons on Oahu. But just to hear like a humpback whale like mm. breathe and see like the barnacles on them so close from a boat at sea is awesome. But other than that, being out here, I like seeing the malolo. Yeah, I like the, seeing flying the flying fish. fish. Yeah, oh, yeah, sure. those, are, those are fun. Yeah, our, our vessel, this boat is too high, but um, on the canoe, it's much lower and closer to like the waves, um, being lower on the water. And so they'd actually fly up onto the canoe, the pola, the deck of the canoe. Oh, my gosh. And so we'd always have malolo <laughs> flying on the deck, <laughs> <and> just <laughs> flying back in the water, toss them back in the water. 
Once, I guess, someone was telling me, one of our other crew members, that one of the malolo, the flying fish, got caught in one of the sails. Oh, my oh. And then uh, they didn't realize it until pulling into port. And, like, when they opened up the sail, then it was just, like, a dried malolo fish. Oh, oh my gosh. Dried fish right there. Yeah. <laughs> didn't even have but to hang it up. They can get kind of high above the water sometimes. They can. Super they can much. jump. And, you know, being on this, I, I mean, I haven't seen them so much, but when I've sailed in the past, they're just, like, constantly, like, playing in the wake of the canoe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've seen so much more Malolo um, than I have on this expedition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we haven't seen as many this expedition for some reason. Yeah. Usually you see them all the time. I love those beautiful that. fish. But like the it, yeah. sh sharing breath with the, with the humpback whales has uh -huh. to be... Uh, has to be such beautiful. a it's so it's so beautiful to aloha with the it with is. those ancestral creatures yeah. and uh, manifestations of kanaloa but kukui uh we have a mom on the line and she's calling you out said no way worms <laughs> definitely the guinea pig but you know in uh in the high andes in in parts of uh what's known as south america some of those cultures they eat kui Kind of like kukui, and the kui is the guinea pig. Huh? The I guinea heard. Pig, yeah. Oh no. That's it's what, pretty good, to be honest. That's what my friend told me one time, and he threatened to, to come over to my house. <laughs> oh, no. You know what? I'm like, yeah, you're not coming uh, over. Anymore. Not coming over. <laughs> lost, lost his invitation. Good, good. We won't. Uh, we would never do that to your beloved, but you know. Oh, amazing. My cousins had a guinea pig for a few years, and uh, I, I just remember that. Uh, the pig found out, uh, you know, figured out opening the fridge sometimes meant lettuce. So oh. sometimes you'd open up the fridge or rattle a plastic bag within your shot of the guinea pig, and uh, uh, the little guy would just start uh, squealing. Oh, my you'd, you'd just hear these excited yeah. squeals from the other room. <laughs> and oh uh, when you actually watched him squeal, like, his ears would flip up, oh and it was just kind gosh. of adorable. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh. They make the most adorable noises. <laughs> they I do. Think. What's biased, the equivalent though. of a of a deep sea guinea pig? A deep sea guinea yeah, what's pig. What's the equivalent? We need some sort of deep mm. sea representative oh, is it of the, a guinea pig. The sea pig. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, could I'm be gonna say pig. the sea pig. Yeah. Could be the yeah. sea pig. That's a good choice. Or like is it the um, the little pig? Um, the little pig squid. What is it? Piglet squid. Piglet, Piglet squid. squid. I'm not familiar with this one. Check it out. Yeah. Check it out. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Catalina, Pick how about you? Right here. You're an animal lover. What's oh my gosh. Favorite? Um, I think I would, I would level. echo the sentiment about the humpbacks. Mm. They've always just to me been kind of like the closest thing to like a deity to me to on God. this earth. Because when you hear them underwater, it's just, I don't oh, know. Oh, their songs. Something so else. I, uh, I also really love um, Mola Mola. Sunfish. Yeah. Well, they're so cute. Oh my gosh, the giant ones are Dirt, so amazing, yeah. huh? They're so cool. They look so clumsy, but it's so endearing. I'm just like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good ones. Molo Molo. The humpback whale. Zach, how about you? I got two, actually. So I got the orca. I love orcas. I've always mm. wanted to see one, like a wild one in person. It, yeah. And so, and the second one, it's probably my personal favorite. Um, it's a cryptic deep water uh, basilet, what's what they call it. I forgot the, the scientific name for them, Lufordo Lu or something like that. I don't know, remember, but the, it's called a Japanese cave basilet, and there's a really striking pink, like a really, really bright, striking pink, beautiful little fish. And um, actually, I was able to get some, acquired two of them, and I had it for years, and uh, it's sad that they passed away a few years ago, but you know they're they're my favorite fish. They're so inquisitive. They're so curious about what you're doing because they'll like. I had only had two of them, and they would just sit there at the front of the aquarium, and just sit there and look at you, and just like. I mean, they're and they're saltwater fish too, so I mean they're they're just really really beautiful fish too as well. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> tropical reef fish or. Um, I guess you could call them tropical reef fish because but they're they're more of a deep water. Deep water uh, fish. Deep water fish. Interesting. Okay. Very cool. Aquaman, what's your favorite uh, creature? <laughs> I think you're off SPL. <laughs> <laughs> so he's all discombobulated right now. That's yeah, okay. Sciences. Okay, no worries. Yep, 
sea star. What's that? Is it eating that sponge? Wow. I've never seen a sea star eat a sponge. It could be eating something that's on top of the sponge or just hanging out there. Yeah. No idea. Yeah, can we get a quick zoom on that uh, sea star, please? Yep. Thanks. Amber, can we get a zoom? One of our great uh, fellow deep sea travelers tuning in online on Nautilus Live says, my favorite fave sea creatures, my current fave sea creatures, the residents of the control van. Aww. Yeah, there we go. So sweet. Eight to 12 watch, so sweet. making the internet fall in love with you. <laughs> I would, I would agree. Amazing to be with you all in this van on another watch. Almost sad we can, we can kind of count the remaining dives left and just, just about one hand and want to keep exploring. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, still, okay. still plenty of time. So Pardon. plenty of cruises to go too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Saka says, Walteria well, with three echinoderms, crinoid, asteroid, and ophiroid. Yeah, there it's you very go. exciting. It's Next a good to, set. It's a good trio. Yeah, neighbors to a polyopagon sponge. And some bamboos. Uh, those were yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Th those crinoids were um those well. Those uh, echinoderms were atop of the Walteria sponge. Yeah. Yeah. I just remembered a, um, a spot that I got to go dive and snorkel. It's off of Maui. It's a, like a, a like a crescent shaped kind of volcanic cone. Oh, Molokini. Molokini, yeah, that's oh, it. Oh, yeah. Molokini, yeah. And I remember we got to dive on the inside of it, and it was calm enough that they took us around to the backside and let us jump in. Backside I Molokini. Oh my gosh, oh. I just remember how crazy it was because you couldn't see any, you couldn't see beneath you because, you know, it was so deep, which Ooh. already gives me butterflies. And then there must, there were humpback in the area, and you could hear their hear songs just echoing, by. and it sounded like they were oh, right really? there oh next to you. That's Kanaloa singing oh to you, gosh. Catalina. I remember oh. just being like, it was just like an adrenaline rush. I was like, oh my god, I was expecting them to come up beneath me at any moment. <laughs> Do you wow. see any manta rays or mano, any sharks while you're on the time? Yes. Yeah. It's a popular spot for our, our big pelagics, our, our mano yeah. and our manta rays oh. cruise that backside of Molokini and it's a spectacular, spectacular dive. Oh, I'm glad you've been there. That makes oh me gosh, happy. Uh, during humpback season, of course, uh, the, uh, the the humpback whales come during the winter months, kind of uh, December through March. Sometimes a little mm -hmm. earlier than that, I stay a little later, and and uh, they come down to Hawaii from Alaska, colder waters where they feed in the summer. But they come down to uh, to make babies and to give birth to babies, and it's really uh, really just a spectacular time. And and uh, there is a marine sanctuary proposed designation for the Maui Nui, for, for all the islands of, of Maui Nui to uh, be a marine sanctuary specifically dedicated to caring for that space for those humpback whales, which are yeah such majestic creatures for sure. So I believe um, there is a um, national marine sanctuary, but I don't know if it's like the place itself yeah, is designated but um, there's amazing people working mm. over there like uh, David Lyman yeah. and uh, one of my mother's co-workers Grant Thompson and others over there who are doing amazing work um, oh. during um, Kohala season when they go out and they they do uh, what do you call disentanglements yeah yeah. Oh. yeah absolutely sometimes those humpbacks get caught in uh, in fishing gear and derelict fishing gear and other lines and um, it's amazing mahalo kukui for lifting up the ohana back home who do so much to take care of of all of our more than human more than human friends um, not just the whales but all living things a deep connection to all of them in hawaii and so many people give so much time and energy and love to uh, to care for them to malama them so yeah it's fantastic Keep it up, yeah. excited for their return. I, I got to, it was up in Alaska this summer, got to see the humpbacks up there, and and uh, we see the same whales come back and forth, and so it's uh, 
you know, to sort of follow them on their migration feels like a, hey, I get to join the whales for, um, you know, a season, and that's really special. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's another pumice there. Do you want to look at it? Yeah, we can just do a little flyby on it. Yeah, we're seeing a uh, change in corals here. Uh, yeah, we've seen some different chrysogorgias. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things have kind of flattened out a little bit. As you mean as the rocks have flattened out a bit? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we're kind of getting up on top of this ridge that's going to take us uh, up to uh, the summit. So we're, we're kind of getting into the, the summit-ish re region, but there's still a lot of dive left. Just want to throw out there that the... Yeah, more hyaloclastite, too. But yeah, that's that's definitely a bigger pumice. Sorry, go ahead, Dan. No, I just want to let people know that the, that humpback whale marine sanctuary, National Marine Sanctuary, has been has been yes. designated for quite some time and um, already extends to cover all the islands of Maui Nui and, and beyond in the Hawaiian Islands. So it's been great work happening. Um, so just uh, thank you to, to Andy and others online, just making sure we give the right information but uh yeah incredible definitely Incre monday incredible i know i'm century. wearing some of my coffee <laughs> oh no <laughs> can you zoom amber eh, it happens sometimes or yeah it is amber right there <laughs> yeah there's one of our uh travelers it looks that like it is i thought it was a sponge uh, oh yeah nope nope that's uh Oh, that's deceptive. That is a sponge. <laughs> Not a very lively one. It looks a lot like our uh, pumices that we get. It's a very similar color shape. It's a little bit bigger than what we've been seeing uh, from the pumice chunks normally. So. Because they also have those holes, those pockets of air in the pumice stone sometimes. You yeah, but you, you can see that uh, you can actually see a much more fibrous structure, whereas yeah. with the pumices, it, it would look a little less uh, it's grainier. chaotic, I yeah. guess. Uh, you'd see a little bit more uh, alignment of that structure between the holes. So, yeah, I agree. This is a dead sponge, especially because there's uh, an associate hanging out inside of it, which right. is a little hard to do with a pumice. Mm -hmm. Really? No, I would imagine that with a bunch of holes in the pumice, you would actually get some associates inside of it. Um, they're not quite as interconnected uh, in that way. I wouldn't expect a uh, brittle star to be able to take up residence quite like that okay. at least I haven't seen anything like that yet but um, that one seems like it's it's been there for a long time fantastic all right cool thanks for thanks for the zoom on that mm -hmm. looked like pumice not a pumice <laughs> <laughs> not everything is a rock uh, so sad Val. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe your favorite animal could be the rockfish, since they ah, look like a rock. Perhaps. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I, I do like the tumbling snails quite a bit. <laughs> they, they've, uh, they've charmed me. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that. Did we do Amber's favorite animal? Not yet. Amber was a little busy for a minute, but Amber, your favorite? Ooh, that's tough. There's so many great ones. Um, Early in the cruise, uh, different cruise, I saw a magna pinna squid. What, kind, what was it? It's called a magna pinna. That's the name of it. They have very, very long um, tentacles. Just large and awesome. <laughs> Sheet flows at the moment, along with a lot of rubble. Which I am still very much eyeballing. Oh, and then I must mention that I also just am thrilled every time I see a shark. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. Sharks are uh, 
welcome visitors we see sometimes around the ship. Yeah, amazing to think how many times we're in the presence of mano, of sharks when we're in the water. Those of us who spend a lot of time in the ocean and, uh, and we never know. They just sort of curiously circle around us and have a little look and uh, move on um, almost every time. Mm -hmm. And yet they sometimes they get an undeserved reputation as monsters and we hear about shark attacks, but it's uh, actually such majestic, amazing animals. They really are. And been around for so long, yeah? yeah. Almost half a billion years evolving in these yeah. oceans. So almost geologic in nature. Oh, Very sharks. much geologic in nature. Yeah. Uh, very, uh, very successful uh, evolution. Not necessarily a lot of uh, environmental pressures to move away uh, from that body plan, that way of being. Is that one of those little yellow stalked sponges that we're coming up on? Yeah. Having a hard time. It's Take looking off. like a eupectelid. Mm -hmm. I prematurely want to say Bolosoma well, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm over here like, I like to let things get a little bit yeah. closer <laughs> to <laughs> No, that's definitely but a yellow stalk. Did you want to look at it? Sure, we can. Yeah, yeah let's we take a peek. Yeah. Adelaide to come up to us anyway, so. Okay, no worries. While we're um, taking a look, Val, I remember in our watch last night, um, you mentioned that the mang manganese crust looked a bit thinner um, when we first came down than we've seen on some of the other seamounts. Have you seen any other clues as we've been traveling uh, along this ridge that might indicate whether this is more associated with that Hawaiian hotspot or potentially an older, um. older one? The manganese crusts have actually looked kind of thick on this dive, but they okay. did look a little thinner on uh, one of the dives that I was processing yesterday. Oh, uh, that's right. You were talking yeah, think, about uh, a, a recent dive. That's two right. dives ago. Got it. Um, here they look pretty thick. We've been seeing a lot of spaces, uh, a lot of these areas where, a lot like this, where um, everything just seems to be glued down to the substrate. Um, and you know we've been we've been fortunate to have some rubble fields where uh, uh, there is some looser material to pick up, but it looks like a lot of the substrate is uh, just crusted over like this, and that that does actually make it a little bit um, trickier to ascertain uh, just how thick the manganese crusts are here because we can't pick up the stuff with the thickest manganese crust; it's just yeah. stuck. Uh, so we're we're uh, we're dealing with a little bit of selection bias on uh, what we can actually bring aboard, and that that may end up having a somewhat thinner manganese crust too so so just based on initial look just it, we're, we still don't know but uh, potentially potentially older given the amount of incrustation we're seeing i'm leaning toward older right okay. now for the seamount yeah but two dives ago um hard to say given yeah. there there are some unknowns that we uh we can't suss out at this time but the crusts are a little thinner and that's potential evidence for uh, a Hawaiian origin for that, that seamount, but it could also just reflect uh, some uh, geomorphic processes uh, happening later. That's right, things could have broken off and- uh, Yeah, can we get a zoom? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I, can't, I can't get on the bottom right here, it's too steep. No worries. Yeah, yeah there's just things we don't, we don't know yet. Yeah, this is only the very, very, very beginning of trying to answer that uh, question or put that puzzle together. There's a long process after we have this visual survey to yeah. study the samples very carefully, multiple layers. It was something we talked about last night was the, how these yeah. rocks reveal their secrets over time and through various layers of analysis and study. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah we can learn a lot on the ship, but uh, sometimes we need that really quantitative information uh, to reach a, a deeper understanding. So, yeah, we'll be able to uh, do age determinations on some of these rocks and, uh, yeah, um, answer that question uh, for sure. Yeah, so that that is a yellow stock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just fascinated by some of the bright yellow things down here because they, they show up so early in uh, uh, 
uh, the Atalanta and uh, Hercules cam, so it seems like those what would be easier to spot. Is this just a deposit? Or yeah. Uh, I'm going to hold sponge, maybe. I'll get down there in a second. Yeah. Give me one second. No worries. Yeah, it seems like the bright yellow stuff, it's, it's just much more visible. And uh, if there is any reliance on uh, light down at these steps, it seems like those would be sticking out like a sore thumb. Well, we are at 1,600 meters, so it, it would... Yeah, I mean, we're, we're well out of the photic zone. Um, oh, photic and, zone, absolutely. And, yeah. the, and even the twilight zone, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say what... What is looking like uh, What animals but. can and can't see down here, too. Some of them have... Well, and, um, you know, don't forget that there is a lot of bioluminescence in right. the area, so it could have stuff like that. But amber? It, yeah. You know, that yellow may not have any evolutionary advantage or disadvantage as well and that could well be an explainer for Look why some of these are that color crab yeah, go. Yeah. oh it's one well, of it's those got an anemone on the back yeah i think yeah, it, the name starts with an h um it's a uh, it's a pretty common crustacean around here a little uh um yeah they're they're pretty they're pretty wonderful oh That's wow so cool. Just going along there. Look! Look at the it's legs. Cool. They're so long. Yes. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Are they, they are they decorator crabs? Is that yeah, it is a type of decorator crab. I think it's um, not finding it at the moment, but um, yeah, this is one of these mutually beneficial relationships, ah. right? You know, the uh, the crab gets uh, protection. The anemone gets uh, gets to move around and you know, kind of eat on the fly. Yeah. Interesting. It's labeled as today in our um, in our ID guide. I would have, might have suggested it was a, a decorator crab instead, but yeah. Uh, Steve says homilid crab. That's what. Yeah, that's the name I was trying to trying to find. Um, gotcha. Well, awesome. Thank you, Steve. Yes, yeah, so these are pretty common critters, but uh, it's always it's always really cool when we get to see them. Yes, Amber. Yes. Yeah, getting a lot of help here from uh, science chat. By the way, I don't actually know these things. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, Stephen Asaku who've been with us for a while, and uh, uh, Tina's just joined us. So um, yeah, welcome. We're happy to have all of you. Is that a Venus flytrap anemone here? I don't know. That's what I thought too. Could be. Looks like a looks like an anemone on that sponge. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can see the two uh, two lobes there. That that is uh, Actinosophia Venus flytrap. <laughs> Makes anemone. it look like that sponge has a mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Call them Mario with the piranha plants. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a metallic gorgia we're just passing over. Maybe another stocked sponge in the background. Yeah. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of these Volterior sponges um, in this dive, as well as some of the bath pathies and um, chrysogorchids. A lot of crinoids on top of them as well, as well as crinoids just uh, hanging out on the rocks too, which is mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, many different uh, morphologies of bamboos. Yeah. Oh, and you know, you can never forget about the polyopagon sponges. Yeah, 
so it looks like we've changed lately. The the rock type has moved from. What uh, Val? What would you s would you say that the the rocks have changed a little bit? We've got some more smaller rocks and oh look at that we've got one of those. Um, actually, it could be coralomorph. I didn't see any of the white uh, bubbles on it, but um, look, let's we might get a second look here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, uh, going back and forth with science chat we here. We can get a zoom We're on a that. Good time. That'd be awesome. I can close. Thank you. So, oh, kind of puffball shaped. And we're going to zoom. Mm. It does? Wait, where? Where are you looking? What are we looking at? I'm just wondering if it has those... Uh, no, I'm not. The little, little lobes at the end. It, to me, it looked like Oh, there's maybe something not as distinct as the other. Yeah. You know what? I'm not. Saw, I'm not seeing the, the the similar oral disc as um, we saw on the coralomorph. I'm be, muted. Be a true an anemone. There you go. I was gonna try to ask that. You you got it. <laughs> yeah. 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 There is. Um. There are these. Uh, oh. Um. Oh, I was. I almost said it right. Lipanema. Um anemones that have a similar morphology um they're pom -pom. little pom-poms pom yep little pom-poms uh saka um, says liponema or liponema oh nice love that love that we're thinking yeah so in the liponematidae uh liponema species liponema species is uh my best identification at the moment. They're very cute, though. They're some of my favorites to see. I always love seeing um, little puffball anemones. Lipanema, just a random association in my brain, makes me think of that song, Girl from Ipanema. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> right, let's it does go. Sound very similar, yeah. Carnival. Yeah. Ipanema. How does it go again? Oh boy, come on. <laughs> mm. Okay. Excellent. You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> I do. <Come> no. <laughs> Girl from Ipanema, you, that's a good one, Kukui. Ipanema is a beautiful beach in Rio de Janeiro. Um, that incredible coastline there in Brazil. Great place to go and dance the night away. Kind of like that anemone is doing so elegantly. Just dancing the night away. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Just like the girl from Ipanema, the Liponema. There goes that girl, the girl from Ipanema. We'll play it at our dance party. Oh, good. Nice. As you should. As you should. That's you can also sing it, too. <laughs> 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 we can sing along karaoke style, yeah? 
Uh, I am liking these rocks so much over here. <laughs> well, we have we have moved a bit. Yeah, we, we've gone up a little bit. I think about 100 meters since the last sample. So maybe maybe before we uh, uh, get up to waypoint six, like right before it steepens, if we can uh, maybe pause the ship uh, there, we can see if there's something we can collect. Yeah, the ship is actually stopped now, and Herc is just getting ahead of Atalanta, so it would, would this okay. be a good spot? Yeah, we could get a rock right now. I've been sitting here just getting like antsy. Do like, Dr. Val needs rock, a rock. rock. He needs a rock. <laughs> let's, get, let's get Dr. Val a rock. Wonderful. Which is good because it is important to characterize. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying not to uh, uh, get us too full up on rocks and uh, try to keep it uh, reasonably spaced out. Absolutely, absolutely. And the, you're uh, also doing a great job tuning into what Kanaloa is gifting us with. And uh, yes. if you're feeling in your na'o that these are really great pohaku, then maybe that's a sign. Could be, yeah. There might be secrets here Kanaloa wants you to know. Oh, perhaps. Yeah, the summit is uh, only about a little Anything over 100 meters up. Okay, let's see what we got here. Let's get my coffee cup out of the way so I don't uh, wear more coffee. That would always be good. That one, maybe it might be a little on the big side there. This one looks like it might be loose. Mm. Yeah, we might have to tap a couple. Maybe that one. No, it's not on. Yeah, I, I saw it shoot up and I thought it was something else, but. Oh yeah, we could do that too. A background. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we've done that yet, have we? Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, Some of these might be glued down, but we'll, we'll find out. And if it's not suitable here, we might be able to hop forward a little bit and uh, check another spot. one up front is quite large. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, we can see if that one is loose. I'm not sure if it is. We may have to uh, tap on a couple of these too. like it's fixed. What is this one doing here? Hmm. Ah, yes, we are in deceptive territory. Okay. I don't, I don't think that one's going to go. Um, maybe if we hop over to uh, the right a few meters, there might be some debris there that we can uh, we can pick up.
Of course, it could also be that uh, Kanaloa will be suggesting some things remain a mystery. Ah, yeah. There might be some options here. Might be some loose rubble up here. I'm not sure if it's in reach. Um, there's something there. Clearly this verbal pile happened a while ago. Ah, oh, oh, there we go. There. Yeah. Yeah, it looks uh, chunky one, and blocky. The one you just moved? Yeah. I think that would that, be a good sample? Yeah, I think that would work great. Oh, that one just came loose. Okay. Hi, friend. Yeah. Just needed to be persuaded. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they need a little bit of coaxing. Looks pretty rocky in there. Seeing a little bit of that red weathering. So we'll see, uh, see what the dimensions look like. See what some of those broken surfaces look like. That looks like a high aloclastite. Oh, nice. Uh, that may not be something that we want. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it looked good, and then, it, yeah, we're seeing that, that characteristic yellow color. Um, how about we forgo um, sampling for a little bit longer, uh, at least for a rock? And uh, there, there were a couple other a, things we yeah, wanted to look at. a zoom that we'd like and um, a, Niskin, a background Niskin sample. Uh, I think to the right. Um, to the we right. did shift, so I think if you actually um, panned up, we might oh, be yeah. able to see right, it. Right. it. Might be over. It might be actually to you the might left. Might want to go to the left yeah. a little bit. If you wouldn't mind panning to the left. Yes. There, there it is. Yeah, right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the rocks get away, Sometimes. like the girl from Ipanema. Yeah. Well, it looks like on uh, high pack survey, uh, we're coming off of another one of those uh, those knobs. So kind of makes sense that we're running into some hyaloclastites here, but maybe along the slope that we're about to go up, uh, we may see uh, a change again. Okay, so we have a uh, complex stratigraphy in the area. So yeah, we aren't seeing any of the uh, pillow flows anymore, but it's uh, much more broken up and rubbly. Kukui, surprised you'd, uh, you don't remember when um, the girl from Ipanema won, uh, I think, record of the year, Grammy. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh. oh, really? You might not remember it because it was 1965. <laughs> <laughs> that song's been around a while. Bossa Nova jazz samba music from Brazil. Remember Yeah, I, lo I love Bossa Nova. It's just it's such a chill, kind of like just 
you, you, yeah, just a chill kind of music that just kind of flows. You just kind of go with it. As Catalina put it the other day when I asked her what she was listening to, she said, oh, just some jazz. And I said, she said, oh, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it a really vibe. is. Yeah, so this is looking like um, unbranched bamboo. The, the the stripes on the nodes are much much lighter on this one than what well, we've seen I in think, some others. I think it's also because of the polyps. So I think well, we've even, got a, even we've down got a here, strip here doesn't seem as pronounced. I think because the tissue may be covering it okay. that's secreted by the polyps. Could be that. Could be, yeah. Awesome. Can we pan up a little bit? Great, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, those polyps are beautiful. They are. Look, there's a little hydroid in the back. Underneath that rock on the sediment. Oh, oh yeah, you can see yeah. them. You're right, yeah. You're looking right here? Yeah, yeah. That, that's a little hydroid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it almost looks like a little octocoral. Could be. Maybe not. Well, it's a bit far for me to, for me to tell, but awesome. Thank you so much for that. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And you said a miskin? Yes. Yeah. Yes, okay. we did. We wanted to do a background miskin. Yeah, so for those who um, have not been following along with every single <laughs> one of our, uh, our dives this uh how dare they? This cruise, I know. <laughs> but in case you have missed a couple of our dives, we are um, not only look collecting um, rocks and uh, different taxa, we're also um, collecting water samples for uh, eDNA, which is environmental DNA. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool um, tool that's been developed that allows you to look at um, all the DNA that is within the water sample that you collect. So right now we're taking one um, that is sort of like background. You know, there's not a whole lot of different taxa that we can see visibly. So it's a good way to get an idea of, you know, what um, what's just what's just flown around within the water column. What's you know, what is this the information um, beyond what we can see? Uh, number five. So this is the second Niskin we'll be taking on this dive? Yep. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. Oop. Yep. I couldn't tell, actually. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. It's a good one, but... Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't even, I think it did. I think I see the white vertical okay. horizontally. Great. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Kukui, what goes on when we bring those Niskin bottles? What's the, what's the processing on, uh, do we do do we do that on board? Do we do the filtration on in the in the wet lab? Yeah. So um, when we bring the ROV up, um, we go out to the Niskin bottles, we collect it, and then we bring it inside, and we have a water pump and a manifold on board with um, some filtration cups up, and uh, we clean the station with DNA away, and uh, we basically filter all the water through that vacuum pump. Um, and then we collect the, the filter pads and we put it in a buffering solution um, that kind of stores and collects all the DNA at a room temperature. Um, that's provided by the scientists who are requesting eDNA. And yeah, and then we give it to them when, um, when we ship it off. And they, they continue to process it and analyze um, the samples that are within those, those vials. And so the buffering solution means it, it doesn't require the negative 80 or we we still put it in the freezer. Oh no, yeah, it 
Um, doesn't require um, to be in a freezer, actually. Um, I, I, I'm not too sure about why, mm -hmm. but um, the SOP um, tells us that you can just leave it out in Store room temperature. Room temperature, that's and, awesome. Yeah. Wait, that's, wait what, did, what did you say you added to it? A buffer? It's a buffer. Um, now you know those those little vials that we put the filter? I think it's yeah, a, some yeah. kind of a buffer in it. Oh, there's and already so a buffer in it. Yeah, oh, so cute. they already like put all the buffering, the same amount of buffering solution in each vial. And so they put it in little boxes for us. And so we just go in sequence okay. and we just put the filters in those little buffering solutions. And nice. away they go. Fantastic. Yeah, and it's a really great way to get an idea of what organisms are are within the area yeah. that we're, um, you know, um, and so you can look at multiple different levels of organisms. You can get, um, you can get back huge amounts of information on bacteria. Um, you can, you can sequence for um, all the corals or all the sponges. You know, there, you know, there's, there's different. Well, I'm not actually positive about sponges um, if they've got. Um, uh, primers for sponges, but I know that they've been working on um, ways to get a lot of the different coral taxa um, identified. Um, so it's a, it's a really interesting and very unique tool that will give you a huge amount of information of, of everything that has, you know, been in contact with that water for, for um, a period of time. It's pretty, mm -hmm. it's really interesting, so. I know if you're curious to learn a little bit more about eDNA, I believe there's some resources on Nautilus Live backslash education. You can search for environmental DNA or eDNA, and um, there's some explanations and uh, use cases presented there. So please go check that out for other yeah. amazing resources too, especially all of our teachers or homeschoolers, parents, young people out there. Amazing things to learn about the deep sea anytime, all the time, whether we're got the ROVs in the water or not. Yeah, that is such a wonderful resource. So more girl from Ipanema facts. Apparently it is uh, one of the most recorded songs of all time. Allegedly only second to yesterday by the Beatles. Frank Sinatra made it uh, quite famous when he, when yeah. he sang it, and oh, yeah. uh, I love I love that version, and uh, it's a beautiful song. It's it a beautiful is. song, and uh, apparently yeah. one person who sang it, uh, according to our friend Tina in uh, the Scientist Ashore chat, uh, Astrid Gilb uh, Gilberto, sorry, uh, passed this June, and uh, she she sang a cover of that, oh, sang a version of it. Beautiful. I have to look that one up. Yeah. Who did originate the song? Did you say that? Uh, Joe uh. Beam, uh, a bossa nova samba Brazilian musician. Um, I think Antonio Carlos, Joe yeah, Beam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah, it was a fantastic, fantastic song and uh, great samba rhythm and, and a great story. A simple story. Girl walks by, boy falls in love, girl ignores him. Yeah, <laughs> love it. She's looking at the ocean, actually, as she should. So uh, devastating to some of us, but uh, exactly, exactly how it ought to be. Some of these bamboos that are spiraling as they as we're coming up on them and they're moving into the foreground keep throwing me for a loop. I'm like, what is that? And then the perspective changes a little bit. I'm like, ah, bamboo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it can be a little hard to uh, spot right off uh, like a what we're seeing. Large crinoid on that dead Walteria sponge. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what kind of rock are we looking at now? Is this oh, uh, looks like a sheet, sheet flow. flow. Oh, yes, 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 we got yes, yes, something got coming there. up here. Yeah. Oh, one of those giant urchins. One of those large purple urchins. Yeah. It just but amazes me how big they get in cool. some places. And Dr. Val, I, I don't, I don't mean to jump in when someone asks a geology question, but I always want to see if I can answer, answer it, and then get it right. Oh yeah, go yeah, for it. So, apologies for sometimes no, no, jumping no, no, in. No, no, no. But, and it's okay if I get it wrong. You can get you can 
Puhy me, you just give me a little smack. Yeah, that's perfectly fine by me. Yeah, we, we sampled a large urchin. Uh, I don't remember if it was the species or not uh, last year. And uh, they, they are hard to sample. They're uh, very similar in density to the water. So uh, yeah. it's, it's hard to keep a grip on them. Also, they're, they're a delicate, little on the softer yeah. side. Very delicate, yeah. They don't feel so delicate, the shallow water ones, when you bounce off of them on the reef. Oh, I'm sure. No. I'm sure, oh, yeah. Give a zoom, Amber. Uh, pancake urchin, according to Tina. Uh, oh, really? Sounds so French, they're that. sometimes That's called awesome. the chapeau urchin. Chapeau. It's beautiful. Look at those wow, patterns. Wow, look at that. Yeah, they are beautiful, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Those spines are no joke, though. No, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So those, those look visually similar to several of the different um, types of urchins that we've seen. Um, that you, and you will see throughout the, this oh, area. Yeah. There you go. Um, very similar to the kind of third day. So are we seeing a skeleton here and that's causing sort of that intricate uh, uh, woven structure? Woven structure? Yeah, yeah, this, oh. this kind of, oh, not quite herringbone so structure cool we're seeing. I see, I see what, I see what you're talking about. Um, I'm pretty sure echinoderms are made out of tests. Like they have, their skeleton is sort of. Um, right. Uh, but I'm not positive about that um, scale herring bones. Do you know more, Kukui? Um, as I, if I can recall correctly, last um, expedition we had a urchin biologist on board, and she would, um, they would dissect the the urchin um, to collect like the gonads and some mm -hmm. of the digestive material from it. And when you cut into it, it's it's pretty rough. So I believe that's the tissue, but you can see the test, like the, you know the pentameterous like radial like segments that you can see around here. Right. Yeah. We're yeah. Looking at those. I believe that may be the test, and then you can see the tissue that. It. But when okay. you cut it through the tissue, it's it's kind of crunchy. Yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. also part of the skeletal structure too. Interesting. But yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They are very delicate, fragile little. Sometimes creatures. not so little. <laughs> yeah. This one's over 10 centimeters uh, diameter. Wonderful. Is this oh. full zoom? You can see its legs. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Thank it's walking. Yeah. See these little legs just kind of going dur -dur 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 there. I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if we had the time, we could sit here and watch it move around. Yeah. <laughs> well, he popped up for a second. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. He's like, I'm sprinting. <laughs> come, on. <laughs> yeah. come on, cut me some slack. They can move actually pretty yeah, quickly. Some of these that's urchins, true. you you can see them visibly walk across the seafloor. Um, yeah, in the shallows, they like to hide out between rocks. Sometimes they they get you coming out of a oh, dive. There's a metallic gorge yeah. up there too. Yeah. Then they'll quickly scramble out to right where you're about to land when you're wiping out on a wave. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Yeah, when Absolutely. I was in doing a field geology course in Curacao many years ago, one of my classmates. Uh, got a sea urchin spine in his finger and he was mm. he was in some pain for a while oh yeah, yeah. it's one of those little black ones with the giant spikes oh, nice. the diademas. Yeah, something like that yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we yeah. felt terrible yeah. for him i had a friend um we were scuba diving and <laughs> he went by a wall of urchins and they literally like started shooting their shooting spines them out. Yeah. And, they can and do that oh. they can do that if you get close enough and then it got launched all in his knee and no Tattoo that day, so. Hey, <laughs> oh my gosh. All the urchin tattoos. That's oh a, my goodness. Yeah, uh, I have one of those on my elbow from a bike accident. I've definitely had my my feet and my rear end up for a few days after uh, <laughs> some yeah, bad, like bad wipeouts on the reef. Yeah, I'm bringing yeah. it up. Okay. Yeah, no yeah, fun. That, that same trip to Curacao, I was uh, just coming out, I think, after. Uh, when we went snorkeling and I got caught by a wave just wrong and got knocked into oh. a dead brain coral and oh. I had this perfect brain pattern <laughs> all scabbed up all over my thigh. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah. It oh. gave a whole new meaning to getting brained. They don't uh, they don't get any less sharp even after they're dead. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> those things hurt. I, I was kinda grateful it was dead though because uh, sometimes you can get bacterial colonies that Absolutely. live on those shallow corals and oh. uh, I, I was uh, very happy to not have to deal with that uh, bacteria getting into my skin. Yeah, as oh, surfers right, here do. It can be pretty rough. As yeah. surfers do, we often uh, find ourselves chasing waves in remote parts of the world and then uh, take 
you know, the, the reef tax collector comes and uh, we end up with live coral trying to grow inside of our bodies. It's uh, mm -hmm. not, so not, a, not a pretty sight. Mm -hmm. There's a, one time I wiped out at Honolii and it was um, by, shoot, I forget what they call it, the peak. Mm -hmm. And it's like super shallow inside. And I, I got out of the water and I, I, I looked down at my knee, it was bleeding, and I thought it was, oh, it's just a small cut. And it turns out there's like a chunk of coral that was lodged Inside. in my knee. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that, that's what you are. Oh my gosh. Ouch. Yeah, that, that's when I learned that corals can grow inside of you because my dad was like, yeah, make sure you take that out right away because I'm uh, pretty sure there's some corals growing in me too. So <laughs> you don't want that. I'm like, okay, cool. Thanks, Dad. Human coral hybridization. Well, why not? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Just graft it on. It'd be kind of cool. Get some zoanthelae. We can do some photosynthesis. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Do patellas make good substrate? <laughs> no. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's a good question. Have any of you guys seen that animated movie Surf's Up? Yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that. I just remember the scene where they inter they have the little urchin interviewed. It's like, yeah. <laughs> it stepped on me. It stepped on me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> gone, gone, broken, broken. <laughs> <laughs> was that the one with the penguins? Some rubble yeah. here. Yes. And Chicken okay, Joe. Okay. Don't forget. Don't forget. Oh, uh, yeah. Chicken yes. Joe. I love that movie. It's yeah. Ah, oh, Joe. Oh. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great film. Looking at some rocks. Looks like some talus here. What do you think? Maybe some time uh, for a rock? I think it's rock o'clock. It might be rock says, Let's again. go, let's go. <laughs> some decent ones right here. Yeah. Still not entirely sure what, what we got on the insides of these, but sometimes that's why we pick them up is uh, to make sure you know, we, we get uh, some representative rock types and something that we can work on. Yeah, that one right here looks promising. Which one? Um, I'm sorry, tell us, waiting for the telestrator to catch up. That one looks like it has some angu uh, angularity on it. Of course, I'm only looking in one direction, and this is where, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, we're always trying to grapple with the uh, lack of depth perception here. We are approximately halfway between waypoints five and six. We're just sitting at a slope break where uh, we're getting out of the splatter little area and starting to slope up. And uh, waypoint six is on a local high, a little bit further up from us. So this is um, right at that slope break is uh, where you're often able to find some rubble piles like this. And uh, yeah, those uh, sometimes give us some really good samples. Something tumbling down from uphill. I think we're gonna luck out right here. Yeah. Get a really nice one. Right, so yeah, that that's the one that I'm uh, eyeballing. <laughs> 